When Elon Musk founded SpaceX in 2002, its mission was to provide reliable and affordable means of carrying payloads into space. Although it certainly has achieved this goal, the company has done so much more than just that. Hidden away in a Texan hangar is a brand new rocket engine that will take us to Mars, help us explore the moon, and even dominate the aviation industry. But how superior exactly is this engine? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX, where we'll unravel what Elon Musk just did with SpaceX's Raptor that is thrilling the minds of scientists. The SpaceX Raptor is a cryogenic staged combustion rocket engine intended to power the high performance lower and upper stages for the Mars-bound rocket Starship. It has more than three times the thrust of SpaceX's Merlin 1D engines propelling the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets and steps away from a kerosene-based propellant. Raptor consumes a combination of liquid methane and liquid oxygen in a full-flow staged combustion cycle. The highly reusable engine makes use of concepts first demonstrated on the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets, including deep cryogenics, cooled below their boiling point to increase their density, and thus load the limited tank volume with a greater mass of propellant. Like SpaceX's Merlin engines, at least two versions of Raptor will be available. One for use on the first stage booster of the Starship launch vehicle, and one optimized for operation in vacuum for operation outside Earth's atmosphere, for the interplanetary insertion, and in the ambient Martian atmosphere for retro propulsion ahead of landing. Raptor's design was revealed in September of 2016 during an address given by Elon Musk at the International Astronautical Congress, outlining SpaceX's Mars transport architecture. Known as the first version of the Raptor family, Raptor 1 uses methane and liquid oxygen fuels, making it one of the cleanest burning rockets available. While Raptor 1 has been refined over the years, it is now an obsolete design. Its construction is complex, difficult to manufacture, and has a long turnaround between launches. It also has hit a thrust ceiling of 185 tons, meaning it will struggle to reach Musk's demands for a Mars-bound starship. SpaceX's solution then would be the Raptor 2, an engine capable of taking us to Mars and even beyond. This isn't just an updated Raptor 1, but an entirely new design from the ground up that can outstrip its predecessor in every metric. Compared to the original Raptor, Raptor 2 looks borderline incomplete. A large amount of plumbing and sensors have been removed, transitioning the engine from a Christmas tree look to a significantly cleaner look. In that way, SpaceX has made the engine more flame and heat proof. A clear step towards SpaceX's goal of removing all engine shrouding from the booster, which would decrease the booster's mass by around 6 tons. This is a clear example of Musk's the best part is no part mantra. Another change made to Raptor 2 to further decrease the engine's mass is the removal of the torch igniters in the main combustion chamber. Instead of relying on redundant torch lighters, the well-mixed hot oxygen gas and hot methane gas act hypergolic under the high temperature and pressure of the main combustion chamber. The most the most fundamental change was opening the throat, allowing more propellant to flow through the engine and increasing thrust. Raptor 2's MCC pressure is an astounding 300 bar, up 50 bar from Raptor 1, and is the highest MCC pressure of any rocket engine ever. The previous record for the highest MCC pressure was the Russian RD-180, which runs at 267 bar. Due to the wider throat and increased chamber pressure, Raptor has gained a significant amount of thrust. Raptor 1 produced 185 tons of thrust, while Raptor 2 produces 230 tons. The current peak thrust of Raptor 2 operates at 247 tons. So SpaceX is confident 250 tons will be achieved. 
In comparison, the best Russian engine, which is the RD-180, generates 386 tons of sea level thrust, but has two combustion chambers and two nozzles. On the other hand, what's maybe just as important when designing a rocket is the thrust to weight ratio, or how heavy the engine is compared to how much thrust it produces. A higher thrust to weight engine ultimately means less dead weight the engine needs to lug around. The RD-180 is at 78 to 1. The Raptor, however, takes the lead and is better here with an astonishing 200 to 1 thrust to weight ratio which is unbelievable, but of course we have to believe it. And not only that, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk shocked the entire space industry when revealing the production rate of the Raptor engines. We're close to achieving um, one ra a Raptor to uh, every day production rate, so sort of seven a week, um, which is, is tough for a complex engine, um, and uh, I think by the end of this year, we'll be able to produce a ship and a booster per month. Can you imagine that? A booster per month? Only SpaceX would dare to make such a claim, but we're still waiting for the 1,000 Starship fleet anyway, so let's just all be carefree about this. And although the speed of Russian missile production is unknown, we are very sure it cannot pass this 24-hour mark. ULA doesn't even have any competitive edge, competitive edge over SpaceX in this aspect, as it has never attempted to develop a rocket engine since 2006. And now, it's simply too late. In short, SpaceX is in a league of its own. And what's even more surprising is when you take a look at the price tag. Raptor 2 is a major improvement in simplification. Elon Musk noted that the cost per Raptor 2 has gone down to only half of what the cost of one Raptor 1 previously was. The long-term goal is an engine cost below 250,000 US dollars. Well, the most expensive engine is the RS-25, which has a sticker price of over 50 million dollars per engine. Yikes. Then we've got the F1 engine, which was 30 million, then the RD-180, which is 25 million, the BE-4 at 16, and we have the Merlin engine, which is less than a million. The cost is one thing, but another strong consideration for the cost of the engine is whether or not it's reusable, and here, the RD-180 is not reusable, or at least never reused, which is different from Raptors, which will all be reused up to 50 flights. All in all, SpaceX's Raptor truly is an engineering masterpiece that is really thrilling the minds of scientists. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.